Welcome back to Her Rules Radio. I am your coach and hostess, Alexandra Jameson. Today, I want to share with you some really powerful information and musings and training on your inner authority, um, working with your inner shadow to gain true and authentic confidence using creative self-expression. This is for all of you rising creative leaders all of you professional driven folk um, this is the culmination of decades of personal and professional work and it's all leading up to the creatrix 2020 mentorship which begins in january 2020 so i'll share some info about that at the end but let's talk about kate kate was a client of mine who had a hidden secret second self her shadow Now, despite a lot of success, Kate couldn't shake the idea that women in her sales group were better than her, more sophisticated, better educated, more confident than her. They were members of this in-group that she never felt invited to. And she worked super hard to get her kids accepted to groups and clubs and schools so that they would feel like they belonged. She always felt like an outsider at work events, school gatherings, and, you know, at family style and school events, she felt like other moms were giving her strange looks and was obsessed that they were judging her. She would say things to me like, every time I hang out with other women at company events or conferences, I freeze up. I drink too much because I'm obsessed with how I look and I'm always comparing myself to them. And even though I've reached like the top tier golden circle and the top 10 people in sales in our company, I never feel like I'm good enough. Again, I go to these events and I have too much alcohol or I eat too much or I just can't relax and make friends with people in a way that feels authentic. I just feel uncomfortable in myself. She went on to say, it's so weird because I'm doing so well in sales. People always comment on how authentic and easygoing I am in our business conversations, but when the attention turns to me in real life opportunity for connection, I get weird and I start to feel anxious. So this freezing up caused by this inner anxiety and insecurity where we aren't able to express ourselves fully and honestly, this is super common. Now, I want you to imagine that you're in front of a person or group of people whose opinions you care about. They're all looking at you. And think about and feel into how your body feels. Do you feel physical signals of tightness, heart racing, sweating, or feeling like you're a deer in headlights? In this moment, do you feel like you can express yourself while feeling those anxious deer in headlights feelings? Probably not. It's very hard for us to feel relaxed and creative in those moments when we feel trapped or the pressure of attention. And this insecurity, awkwardness, anxiety, it kills our ability to connect with others and our creative thinking abilities shut down. It makes us so obsessed with how others might judge us and we can't be authentically generous and we become overly self-focused, which makes us feel more alienated. So through our coaching work, uh, Kate realized that she was keeping herself from these relationships and we practiced. And Kate was able to approach a couple of women in her company that she wanted to connect with. She asked if they'd be interested in forming a women's group within the company so they could support each other. And Kate took the bold step to tell them about her inner anxiety that she was working with a coach and they immediately opened up. They had also been feeling disconnected and wanted to create stronger relationships at work with her. In fact, they both looked up to her and hoped that they could learn more from her about how she had become so successful. So Kate had misjudged them. She had become so self-obsessed and withholding because she was afraid that there wasn't an opening for the other women to approach her. So both sides were wrong about each other. And by bravely, vulnerably opening up to them, they were able to begin a new way of being together. 
Now, I know this sounds easier than you're, you can even believe is possible, but insecurity within us seems to have a life of its own. Inside each of us is this hidden secret second self, the shadow. All those feelings of inadequacy, fear, self-doubt, those are our inner shadow. It's the part of us we try to hide. It's the part we fear we'll be judged for if anyone knew the truth. It's everything about ourselves we don't want to be, but fear we truly are. And it's called the shadow for a lot of reasons. Um, this is actually a term coined by Carl Jung. It's called the shadow because it follows us everywhere. It's your dark side, your ego, the bitch brain, your low vibration self, the id. It's the grotesque Mr. Hyde to our respectable outer Dr. Jekyll. And your shadow impacts how you see and feel about yourself. It doesn't matter if others see you as successful or beautiful or brilliant and wonderful. If your shadow says you're a reject, a loser, too fat, too old, too lame, then that's what you're likely to believe about yourself underneath it all. The shadow is our insecurity. And it's why insecurity is impossible to get rid of because we're trying to hide this part of ourselves. If we're trying to hide it all the time, we're always connected to it. The only way to manage the shadow is to integrate it and turn it into a source of strength. And let me tell you, by integrating your shadow and really owning it, looking at it, using the power of it rather than trying to disconnect from it, you have so much more magnetism and energy. So this truth that I'm sharing today really speaks to our most basic shared human struggle. We all want to feel worthy and lovable and capable, but we are the only ones who see our shadow and know it intimately. And so we feel ashamed and we feel so disgusted by our own inner truth that we turn away or hide the shadow and look outside ourselves for something to make us feel worthy and lovable, capable and valuable. So we end up looking outside of ourselves to others to validate us, approve of our work, our ideas, ourselves. We look for outside approval. It's one of the reasons why we're so obsessed with celebrities and influencers or the woman in our field who has a social media following twice the size of our own. We think that because others are focused on this person, that she must have been validated and approved of. And so we focus on the vanity metrics of follower size, clicks, etc., likes, blah, blah, blah. Our need for acceptance causes us to buy all kinds of things we don't really want, follow career paths we don't truly care about, create things that aren't our true calling because just because they're a way to validate ourselves with likes. Now the shadow is an innate part of our human being but most of us are blind to its existence. Either we didn't know about it and didn't know we didn't know about it, or we're, we're willfully hiding from it. We hide our negative qualities from ourselves and everyone else. To hide, sometimes we criticize others in an effort to take the attention off of ourselves. You ever do that? Maybe we go through life with this like false sense of superiority and a belief that while others are acting badly or destructively, we are wholly virtuous and always in the right. But we know that's not true because a part of us is always aware of our shadow. So no amount of approval from others can make us feel whole and worthy because no amount of outside validation can eliminate your inner shadow. We can't escape it because it's always there lurking beneath the surface. As much as we are born with this innate need to feel lovable and worthy, we are born with our shadow. It's a total paradox. And that lurking beneath the surface, hiding behind our outer appearance of confidence, it makes us feel like a failure, like a fraud, embarrassed or weak. And when you need validation from people, and metrics outside of yourself, you give your power away. Those things outside yourself become your ruler, 
nice little tie into her rules radio, right? Living by our rules, not giving away our power and make someone else the ruler of us. So no matter what you do, you're always seeking this validation, which causes you to edit your ideas and your truth and your unique voice. It makes us twist ourselves and silent our voices in order to hide the shadow from everyone around us, right? We contort ourselves to try to be something palatable, likable. So every time you get into a group of people or you start to reveal yourself online, you freeze up in an order to hide the shadow within. You get unfocused or confused or it stops your forward momentum with expressing yourself. Now, what healers and psychologists since Carl Jung have known forever is that the way to heal our relationship with the shadow is to embrace it, learn from it, integrate it, and use its power. So let's talk about embracing the shadow and unleashing your creative self-expression. So think back to when you were a kid and you felt free to express yourself. Maybe it was creativity, play, movement, your voice, or imaginative self-expression. When we're small, until we experience the first traumas of life, we have a feeling of freedom in our bodies, and we don't yet have a shadow to hide. We're connected to what I call the universal spirit of creative self-expression. We're filled with it when we're young, and you see it in kids you know. This universal spirit of creative self-expression drives us to share who we are, what we think, and how we feel without filter. And we're, we don't care how others react or what they may think of us. It causes us to share ourselves in a genuine, truthful way. And when you embody this spirit, and you can, as an adult, I believe me, you can remember, relearn how to embody this spirit of creative self-expression. You speak and share yourself with clarity and depth, excitement, energy, and authenticity. You become magnetic. You become a channel, a conduit for something greater and universally true. And we all feel it and experience it in different ways. Writing, speaking, singing, dancing, painting. Athletes get into the zone. Artists get into flow, intuition, creating. You're speaking or acting from your deepest, truest self because you're connected to this spirit of creative self-expression, this energy, and we all have the ability to connect with it. And as children, again, we all naturally express ourselves from this universal spirit. And as we grow into adults, we get injured, judged, or punished for our unique expression. We learn how to hide it. And by the time we become teenagers, most of us are obsessed with outside approval from our peers. And then we have to hide anything about ourselves that might be judged as bad or weird or unlikable, which means that our creative self-expression gets squashed. And we use this hidden place in ourselves to store all the things about ourselves that might in any way be unlikable, unworthy, unlovable. So our hidden inner self becomes a dumping ground, becomes a garbage pail. And we keep using our energy to hide this dark dumping ground within us. And our least favorite qualities become inextricably tied with who we truly are because we're hiding it all down underneath all the outside show we put on for others. And our inner truth becomes something we hate, the shadow. See how those two things tie together? So this means, my dear listener, that our shadow holds the key to our true self our inner authority and confidence in our creative self-expression. It takes powerful tools to unlock this gorgeous confidence, this inner authority. And the best tool I can share that I've used myself and with countless clients is this creative self-expression. You know, when I finally came clean and shared that I was eating meat again after being vegan for 10 years, I had to face the shadow that I was a fraud and a failure. The truth was through sharing my evolution and new reality that I was honoring my body, which I had been trying to control through food. And remember, the social media firestorm that came next was massive. But 
through that embracing of my deep, dark truth, I discovered a much bigger audience of people who wanted help in creating a healthier life. I felt honest and self-expressed. I was channeling the truth and my business grew. My client, Kay, she applied for and won a coveted promotion that moved her entire family to Europe, a dream job. Other clients have worked with their shadow to realize they were still trying to appease their parents through their current career track or presentation and have decided to stop hiding their message and passion. They're building platforms, writing books, speaking out. When we embrace this truth, when we stop caring more about what other people think of us or how they'll judge us and begin to self-express more clearly, embracing our shadow, integrating it, our creative voice is unleashed and people are drawn to that. We become a magnet for clients and important relationships. And believe me, if you're listening to this and if you have already stepped on the path of integrating your shadow, you are just one of the few who has bravely decided to integrate the shadow. Great quote from Carl Jung, one does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. The latter, however, is disagreeable and therefore not popular. <laughs> I love that quote. That's so funny. He's like, he's like, hey, if you want to be enlightened, you got to make friends with your darkness, but it's uncomfortable. So most people don't do it. <laughs> That's the truth. That is so the truth. And I tell you what. The women that I admire the most, all the creators I admire most, men, women, gender nonconforming, non-binary folks have embraced the shadow. Once we became, once we, we get more aware of it in ourselves and honor it and find a way to integrate it into our life, that's when you step onto this uncommon path of creative leaders who thrive it is an absolute necessity for true lasting success. If we fail to do it or continue to hide it and hide from it, we become scattered and we feel weak because we're trying to serve our authentic self and hide our shadow, which is exhausting and dissipates our powers and our energy. And people can feel it. They can feel that we're not integrated. So the shadow must become part of your conscious personality tap into your inner authority through this creative self-expression. Embrace this hidden part of yourself, knowing that every single human being, even the greats you admire, has their own shadow they're wrestling with. Embrace it and speak with it, knowing you are the only inner authority who matters. All right? And this is some of the work that I do with my clients and in my groups. And starting in January, at the end of January, I am beginning the Creatrix 2020 mentorship. So I want you to send a text, whatever you're doing right now. I mean, if you're driving, please pull over. <laughs> but whatever you're doing now, I want you to send a text to 33444. Get a, your phone and dial the number 33444 and put the word Creatrix, C-R-E-A-T-R-I-X. Just send that word to 33444 and you're going to get a little email from me and you're going to put your name and email on the early bird list for the Creatrix 2020 mentorship. This is a small group year long coaching program where you are going to get private coaching from me and group training with a group of, now this is only for women and people who identify as women, entrepreneurs, creative leaders, healers, doctors, people who are ready to embrace all of their strengths and power in the service of their creative self-expression for that confidence, that inner authority, for intuition, for up-leveling your life and your work and your business and your income in a way that feels divinely and uniquely you. So shoot a text that says Creatrix to 33 and I'll be talking more about the Creatrix 2020 mentorship in the next few weeks. And 
I really want you to like listen to this episode again. If this topic was like, wow, a zing to your soul. This is some of the most important work that I've done in my career and in my life. And I hope that you're along for the ride. And we'll be back next week. Thanks for listening and tuning in. Mwah!